What's up kids, Caleb here from The Game Bliff, and today is my special day, the day I've been working up to and excited about, and that is Saturn Day. And that is where at least once a month, I will make a video that's completely devoted to the Sega Saturn. And this particular video is all about the system. The Sega Saturn, fifth generation, 32-bit system that competed with the likes of Nintendo 64 and the PlayStation 1. What did Sega do? What did Sega do different? Well, look at that system, look at that box. That's a hot box right there, fellas. Fellow it's a cool box. So today, we are gonna talk about the Sega Saturn. Check it out. Sega! In 1995, we lived in an era where Sega Genesis has taken over the world. Everywhere, children playing Sonic, hooked up to their game systems like they're hooked up to an IV at a hospital. But we all know something was coming from Sega, something big. They had been tinkering and toiling for many years on their project, a special project. They were working on another system despite the success and the interest in the appendage systems 32X and Sega CD. Sega had another trick up their sleeve. They had another, more powerful system in the works. This system was the Sega Saturn. The Sega Saturn, which was developed using many of the same parts as the 32X, was another dual processor system capable of displaying some truly amazing 2D graphics. But this system was supposed to compete with their rival's new gaming machine, the Nintendo 64, and also the mysterious new contender, Sony and their PlayStation. The staff at Sega had to think hard and fast and find some way to produce more detailed 3D graphics than they had originally built their system for, and not only lowered the potential potential ceiling for the graphical processing, but also made it very difficult to program for. The Sega Saturn was released in 1995 to the surprise of retailers and discontinued in 1998 in North America. Although the system had a longer lifespan in Japan and never really seemed to gain any traction here in the US, mostly due to the wide and shocking success of Sony's PlayStation and its ability to produce better 3D graphics. You see, the Saturn had a different kind of launch. Instead of having a pack-in game people expected, no. They packed in Virtual Fighter, an arcade game they had already ported on the 32X. Obviously, this was some kind of power move they were trying to use against the Big N and their upcoming Ultra 64. The Sega Saturn is a fifth generation 32 bit game system with an optical drive able to read discs at the blistering speed of 2X. Its CPU was a state of the art Hitachi SH2 clocked at a whooping 28.6 megahertz. It was slicker than a wet turd on a buttered muffin rack, and it looked like it. The system had a sleek design and architecture, like a race car had sex with a stealth bomber and gave birth to an over-designed rectangular prism. Man, these freaking old-school batteries don't ever seem to last that long, and uh, oh, hey, <laughs> yeah, so I don't want to blow your minds too much with the technical specs of the uh, Sega Saturn or its launch. That's been done to death. Um, I'm going to take a minute here to talk about the controllers. The controllers for the Sega Saturn. The Sega Saturn was launched with a six button controller that was really, really nice and it was one of my favorite controllers of all time. There was also a joystick, a gun for shooting enemies in the face, several aftermarket controllers that really suck, a steering wheel, a 3D controller, and really, really bizarre controllers that make absolutely no sense at all. There's even a revised version of the controller that came out with the Model 2 of the Sega Saturn. The controller for the Sega Saturn is absolutely one of the best six button controllers of all time and lends itself really well for 2D games and fighting games especially. One of my favorite controllers, hands down, if not my personal favorite. The Sega Saturn may be a CD-based game system, but it did have a cartridge slot. No, not for those 32X cartridges, or those Sega Genesis cartridges, but for a 4 meg expansion card that allowed for better 2D graphics, as well as expanded memory and game saving. The system also had an internal storage system, but it wasn't very reliable, and the battery would often die and have to be manually replaced. The games came in oversized jewel cases and were notorious for breaking upon opening. The cases for these games really, really suck and they don't hold up in time. The plastic just splinters and it's really annoying. Yeah, so I know you guys are just thinking that I'm dogging the Sega Saturn, but no, I'm not. I'm not dogging the Sega Saturn. I love the Sega Saturn. In fact, the thing that you gotta think about is 
despite all these weaknesses, despite the fact that the system had really difficult architecture to program for, therefore making third-party developers not really feel like, you know, making, making their games for it, um, the system had some really, really strong titles. And that's really what it's all about. Like, I'm fine with the 2D graphics. I am totally fine with the 2D graphics. That makes me excited. Uh, for me, it's all about the games. And there were some good 3D games that came out on Sega Saturn. And uh, I don't want to ruin that for everybody because, see, that's what this whole show is going to be about. Um, every episode, I'm going to showcase, like, another game, I guess, that I have for the Sega Saturn. And this episode is obviously about the system. And the system is awesome. It was just difficult to program for. And it turned off a lot of developers. And therefore, we didn't get a lot of good games. Or we got a lot of weird ports of games and didn't turn out that great. Like, I mean, this is one of the strange things that happened with the Sega Saturn is on the Sega Saturn, uh, in Japan, they released Symphony of the Night, and it was like the revised version with some extra stuff in it, and the graphics didn't run as smooth, and there weren't as good of transparencies as there was in the PlayStation 1 counterpart, which came out earlier. So even on a system that was supposed to have, like, the greatest 2D graphics, they still botched it up. Those silly boys at Sega. Silly, silly boys. <laughs> Sega Saturn, the benchmark of engineering excellence, combining three 32-bit RISC processors with five additional processors to create a head-snapping 500,000 polygons per second. Wow. Wait a minute. How many processors are in this thing? Eight? How many pixels? No, 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 no. There's only two processors that you can actually use for graphics. Come on. Come on. Calm down. Calm down, Sega Saturn. You are approaching Saturn. You are only seconds away. I have arranged for you to meet my... companion. He will lead you. Sweet, crispy critters. These ads are freaked out for Sega Saturn. Please, I mean, what were they thinking? So weird, but somehow I... He doesn't I like it. Like that. We are five years away from entering the 21st century. Humankind stands on the edge of the interactive age. You have come a long way. But are you ready for the future? Okay, so now we know the ads for the system were really, really freaky. Sega's marketing was just getting weirder and weirder. And, uh, you know, we just didn't really know what to expect, did we? So, let's take a look at the launch games for the Sega Saturn. And then I'll make my final decision about what I think about the system. But I guess you guys already know. Well, you already know what I think about the system. Starting with Sega and AM2's low poly and texture port of arcade classic Virtual Fighter, while it may be lower in detail than it should be, it still plays silky smooth and is superior to its 32X predecessor. Virtual Fighter is a 3D fighting game, the first of its kind. In this game, you select one of 10 players to fight until you beat the living crap out of each other. You eventually get to face off against Dural, who's a really difficult boss, and you only get one round to actually defeat Dural. Dural sucks. Dural. Dural, you suck, Dural. Then there's Clockwork Knight, a zany platform where you play as a wind-up knight, stabbing people with your key. It's a pretty fun game, actually. It's really, really hard. The boss fights are awesome. The graphics are really neat. It's like a 2D sprite-based game similar to Donkey Kong Country. I really like the graphics in this game. I actually think this is a really fun game. Daytona USA, one of the greatest racing games of all time in the arcades, came home to an absolutely awesome port on the Sega Saturn. The music is completely ridiculous in this game. I absolutely love the absurdity of this game. This is a really fun racing game for the Sega Saturn that can be had for a really inexpensive price. If you have a Sega Saturn, you should most definitely have this game. Panzer Dragoon is another in-house colossal masterpiece game at launch for the Sega Saturn. See, despite all the worry about the 3D graphics in the Sega Saturn, the people that were in the internal teams were able to develop the most amazing and compelling on-rail shooter of all time. Panzer Dragoon on the Sega Saturn is an utter masterpiece of a game. And then there's Pebble Beach Golf Links with Greg. Hey, hey, Greg. Glad to see you there, buddy. Let's play a few rounds of golf as you patronize me, you portly fellow you.
final release in the Sega Saturn for its launch was Worldwide Soccer Sega International Victory Goal Edition. That's a mouthful. It's a pretty decent soccer game, nothing really to write home about. It's got some pretty cool graphics. I kind of like the color and the detail in the game. I don't know, it's not that bad of a soccer game, but overall, out of the launch titles, eh, who really cares? You got games like Panzer Dragoon and Virtual Fighter, Daytona USA. Pretty much every other game is better than this game at launch. But hey, hey at least you got a soccer game. Okay, I'll go ahead and say what you expect me to say. I absolutely love the Sega Saturn. I know that there weren't the most games at launch, but there was enough games for me to be excited about. And there were a lot of really, really good games that came out after that. So, this was my review of the Sega Saturn, which I would give the Sega Saturn an 8 out of 10. It's one of my favorite game systems of all time. One of my favorite Sega systems, definitely. Uh, probably my number two favorite Sega system, if I can just say it. But, uh, thanks for watching my video, and I really appreciate all the new subscribers that have been coming around. I hope you guys really enjoy this new video. And stick around, I've got stuff coming up. So I really appreciate all the new subscribers. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Hit subscribe. Go ahead. Subscribe. You can subscribe. It's okay. Um, you know, hit, hit, hit buttons. Look at stuff. Watch videos. It'll be fun. Anyway, thanks for watching my review of the Sega Saturn, which I love. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next Saturn day, and I'll see you guys in my next video, whatever that may be. Maybe it's a let's play, maybe it's a review of another game, who knows. Uh, my next Saturn Day video will be some kind of game review for Sega Saturn. So, see you guys again real soon. Bye.